Hello and welcome back to a very cold channel. Uh, it's very cold in the UK at the moment. Snow and ice. You can see the cars are well iced over. But I need to give you an update on the XC60 because it's back from the garage. It's had the uh, the maintenance work done and a couple of other things as well that I thought it would be worth going over. So let's take a look at the XC60 this time. So this is my 2012 Volvo XC60. It's the D4 with the two litre front wheel drive only. You can get these in all wheel drive, uh, 2.4 engines and other various differences. But yep, this one is, um, it, it's a nice car. I, I do like this car. It does the job really well. I mean, at the minute, with all the snow and ice, you could see it's pretty icy out where we live. Um, actually, it's coping with the snow and the ice really, really well. I haven't had any sort of problems and certainly haven't uh, found that it was losing grip or anything like that. I mean, we do have some pretty chunky Pirellis on it. Whoever had this car before me did really take care of it. It's got four Pirellis on it, so it's a, it's a decent set of tyres on it. Um, it had a load of servicing done. Um, it's been pretty decently looked after, I reckon, and that was uh, that was backed up by the garage. So what I decided to do is because it was new to me, and it's not something that I normally do, to be honest with you. But I took it into the Volvo dealership in the northeast and asked them to first of all do a major service on it. So I'll show you what that entailed very shortly. But also just to check it out. Have a look see if there was any problems or uh, anything like that and also they uh, they also plugged it in and diagnosed because if you remember in the last video I had a check engine light come on and we diagnosed that with a, uh, a code I'll put the code down the bottom there so you can see what the code was uh, so I wanted them to plug it into the Volvo diagnostics and find out exactly what it was so Probably easiest if it, I go through the list and explain what it was they found. Well, we got the major service done, which is the oil, the oil filter. Uh, let's have a look. What else did I get? Uh, a new drain plug. Apparently, they just changed that. Number of times I do an oil change, I don't change that. Um, a new fuel filter. Uh, and a new air filter and a cabin filter as well so that's a major service for this car remember it's up at uh, 129,000 in fact it's just clocked over 130,000 miles um, it did have the timing belt done by the previous owner which is good and actually the Volvo dealership did ask has it been done have you got proof of it because they were concerned they'd wanted to make sure that it had been done and it was all good so that was uh, that was good so on to the bits that they found now I did know Every now and again, there was a slight knock from the front right, mainly when you were turning and when the car was hot, that kind of thing. Nothing major. Now, I'd had a quick look and I suspected it was one of the ball joints was starting to go a little bit iffy. Sure enough, Volvo noticed that one and they have replaced it. Um, again, they, they obviously asked me before doing any of this work, that kind of thing. So that's fairly normal. But yeah, so that was on the bill as well, a ball joint. Um, they filled my um, washer jets up as well and charged me, uh, what was it? £3.50, I think it was. £3.45 for filling the washer fluid up at the dealership. Thanks for that, Volvo. To be honest, I thought you would have just filled that up and 
not even mentioned it but you know they charged me for it lovely thank you um, I'm going to show you the whole bill actually so if you want to look through um, you can see the breakdown of the parts and things like that I think it's useful to know just uh, once in a while it's not often I take a car to a dealership so we might as well take a look through it uh, one of the marker bulbs had gone as well that was a fairly cheap fix they just spotted that one and swapped it out now the interesting bit is what was generating the check engine light so you'll see on there the inspection which was the uh, the check out diagnostic light that was on and as it turns out that was pointing to the t-map sensor and um, it needed replacing now the t-map sensor is quite common it gets gummed up quite badly i'm going to show you where it is um, and basically you can clean them there's plenty of links online about cleaning them but because i was getting this all done at the dealership i thought let's go all in let's get them to do it as well so they've replaced the t-map sensor as well for me um, so that's brand new cleared the check engine light it also got rid of the um, service immediately which isn't the service interval indicator that came on it's actually a precursor to the engine management light coming on so that's why we had that let's take a look at what has gone on in here then so the t-map is under there so let's get the engine cover off should be fairly straightforward we'll just pop these little plastic clips off we'll take a look at our two litre engine that lives under here and do the oil cap if I remember rightly that gets stuck there we go and there we have our lovely two litre diesel engine But the, the other thing that uh, they did, and it's uh, difficult to get you a shot here, is that they did a recall. And on Volvo cars, there was a recall for the front seatbelt pre-tensioners. Now, the pre-tensioner lives in this bit. Actually, there's several pre-tensioners. There's one which is in the main component of the seat belt in the pillar here which is the the key one but there is a second pre-tensioner which is the explosive charge that goes off and what it does is it pulls this part of the belt down and helps to force you into your seat and this is where the recall took place in that basically the seat belt anchors rusted the uh, the metal cable and it could uh, it could corrode and damage so what volvo did is they've done a rather controversial recall they've actually removed it i don't know if you can see down there i'll get a light and shine it down there but you'll see these are just cheapo typical seat belts i mean to be honest it's probably the same as what's in my old volvo 480 seat belt there's no pre-tensioner down there if you look there's there's nothing there's the sensor the wire that goes into it that's the occupancy part of the occupancy check system but you'll see there's nothing down there normally there's a big black wire and um, there's the explosives and things like that and nothing so that's what's been done here these have been taken out and replaced with just these simple ones and that's part of a Volvo recall now the reason why this is a little bit controversial is well it's reducing the safety of the car to a degree now I'm not really sure how much that's causing a problem because according to volvo it still passes all of its safety standards and it is it's been approved by euro ncap it doesn't change the rating of the car anything like that but some magazines and uh, reviewers over the years have said this isn't great this isn't a good thing to have done 
by slightly reducing the safety of a Volvo because let's face it Volvos are renowned for their safety and um, how, how good they are in collisions and uh, protecting the driver and the occupants of the car so it's a little bit of a controversial one that now it is done as a Volvo recall it's done free of charge and it it got done because it was an outstanding recall on the car and I, I would rather not have a recall listed as being on this car at the moment but at the same time it's a it's an odd one for me I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about having the car kind of downgraded like that um, by a dealership and I guess I could have said no and I could have said not to do that I guess I wasn't fully informed at the time I didn't have all the information I didn't look it up until I was preparing for this video to be absolutely honest I just heard there's a recall that needs done yeah go for it um, I, I don't think it's compromising mine and my family's safety to be honest they wouldn't do it otherwise it doesn't change the end cap rating so that's the important thing but it's a little bit controversial of, all, of Volvo doing that why not just replace it with a cable that doesn't corrode you know uh, to be honest I've seen plenty of them that are rusted that it does it just seems to be how it works the uh, the metal cable that actually does the pre-tensioning does seem to rust seen plenty cars with it to be honest I'm pretty sure my other two cars the two Vauxhall courses that we've got in the drive they'll have rusted pretensioner uh, cables on them as well don't think it's a major problem but there you go so a little bit of an odd one that one thought I would include that because it, it's useful to know well there we go that's the full service carried out on the Volvo XC60 the couple of little faults fixed which is great news and also the seat belt modification that's been done under the recall I'd love to know what you think about that one do put your comments down the bottom of course stay subscribed for more videos coming up it's going to be into the new year now because it's almost Christmas and uh, I shall see you in the next video